Today's video is about gaslighting and psyops in real life. These things are not only done by the government and the media. They're the entire Baffo club. You know, the George Carlin, there's a big club. It's a big club. There's a lot of these people. They're all over the place. They're the ones who throw hand signs. They're the ones that are so excited to tell you about how orange is their favorite color. They'll work for 33 years and then retire and then tell you about how they worked someplace for 33 years. Anyways, this group of people, psyops are just part of the game they play. And I think sometimes they just learn from, they learn about the shady things that their group does. They watch it happen and then they decide to do it for themselves. I don't know, but it's, it's so common and probably everybody has witnessed some sort of psyop before that happened in real life that maybe just when it was happening you just felt weird surreal feelings and like is this really happening right now or some sometimes i'll hear about oh i i was standing around and i was overhearing this conversation that was going on but it it sounded like that conversation was like purposefully really loud so that i would hear it anyways this is a big topic. I want to share a specific story and a specific, I don't know, genre of fibs that people tell. And maybe there's other people out there that have psyops involved with this because they love a good story. The Baffos love a good story. They love to bring up the same story over and over and over again whenever you meet them. Uh, like, my family will bring up the story that I'm going to tell when there's no reason to bring it up and they like to keep their psyops alive in that way so let me this is a story i've told before and it's about eyebrow scars and chin scars are another one where you'll hear all sorts of tales about how people got a chin scar so i guess i'll just tell the story and then i'll explain all the weird things where it's i it never sat right with me and now i know that it was just a psyop they were playing on me my family. So one day I woke up getting ready to go to school and out of nowhere my dad is like let's go play baseball in the backyard. Uh, and no that wasn't like a regular thing that we did. So we go out back we're taking turns you know maybe my sister goes up to bat first I don't know maybe my brother goes up to bat first whatever you know you need uh, you don't do the psyop straight away. You got to pretend that something's happening. And then, you know, it's my turn up to bat. And I, I swing and allegedly I hit my brother in the head with a baseball bat. And, uh, and then we went inside and there was allegedly blood and something like bleeding into a shoe. My brother was bleeding into a shoe, and at this moment, it was like, well, time to go to school, now go, and then me and my sister were hurried off to go to school, and that was it. And how does that make any sense? There's so many parts of the story that make zero sense, and I never felt bad about it because I always had odd feelings about this situation. I just didn't, you know, who thinks that their family is performing psyops against them. I didn't even know what a psyop was at that age. And so I'll just walk through it. Yeah, we never played baseball in the morning. That wasn't like a thing. So what? why are we playing baseball this morning? There, I feel like my dad was behind me when I was pitching and he probably just like grabbed the bat when I swung backwards and was like, oh, you hit your brother. Because, I don't know, this was so long ago. I vaguely remember like, a feeling when I put the bat back, but I could have easily just been my dad like grabbing the bat. And uh, I, I don't think that I was swinging like crazy hard, but you know, I guess head injuries are possible. Uh, the shoe thing was bizarre, and nowadays I just imagine that it was just ketchup. They just like had a bunch of ketchup available to pretend to be blood. And it doesn't make any sense to have a crazy event like that happen, and then ship you off to school straight away. 
that doesn't make any sense. If there really was a family emergency like that, then school would wait. If if you really bash somebody in the head so bad that they're bleeding out and they need to go get surgery, then uh, yeah, I, I don't believe you're going to just send your kids off to school immediately right after that happens. So that's looking back. I know it's a bunch of BS, but I guess it gets deeper than that because this whole event is something that happens all over the place to cover up a specific type of scar that a certain class of individuals get. Have you ever wondered like, whoa, what's up with like everybody, all the, all the, uh, all the, you know, I'm trying to think of the word, like the famous, but you know, locally famous, the, the popular kids, all the popular kids get braces and stuff really early. And it's like they all get churned through the same machine of getting, getting things done. And some of them are open about getting things like nose jobs done in high school and stuff like that. But that's not really super common. But a lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes. And you just don't hear about it. And it's eyebrow stuff, chin things, and neck shavings. So uh, I know my sister was going through that stuff. And they would blame it on strep throat. Because I, I know that I would try to get sick. I because I hated school. And so she would allegedly allegedly be sick with strep throat. And it was weird because when those cases happened, it's like she didn't even sleep in, in her room. She was sleeping in my dad's bed for some reason. Uh, so that was weird. And But I would like drink from, from her water secretly to try to get sick because it's supposed to be highly contagious, and I never got sick, so I, I don't even think she had strep, th I think it was strep throat, and, uh, anyways, to back, back to the baseball story, that's the eyebrow scar thing, because right after that, so, allegedly, I go to school, and I come back, oh, your brother got plastic surgery in his face, and it's weird that they'll come out and tell you stuff like that, it's like, why wouldn't they just say that he got like his face fixed from being smashed with a baseball bat. It's like specifically they mentioned plastic surgery and yeah, he has a, an eyebrow scar like so many do. And a lot of people like it, they make it purposefully more noticeable because it's like a cool kid thing because the cool kids get the eyebrow scars. Well, why are they getting the eyebrow scars? It's plastic surgery. It's an eyebrow implant. And I also remember, so this must have been when they started my, my brother on his, his, uh, helping him out with the puberty. Cause they also mentioned, oh, your brother's going to be like eating a lot more because he's on steroids now. And all of this stuff, I have such a horrible memory in general, but all of this stuff sticks in my mind so much because it never made sense to me when it was going on. If, if this really was some freak accident, why are they acting like this about it? And, oh, your brother's going to get really hungry. And, like, they... It just didn't seem at all like, oh, your brother just got smashed in the face and is recovering. It was weird talking about plastic surgery, talking about being on steroids, and so going to get more hungry now. It was just all so bizarre. And now it, it only made sense later in my life when I realized that we're surrounded by a bunch of goofballs. I mean... It's worse than that. These It's really evil what they do. I don't know how they live with themselves knowing that they do stuff like this. This is just one psyop among many that I've seen in my life. And it's, yeah, they the fact that they try to bring this up all the time too, like they're trying to scar me with being a bad person for hurting my brother. But really, my brother's just going through the baffo, uh, you know, getting the braces, getting the eyebrow implant, getting the chin implant, which is funny because none of that stuff ever happened to me. My brother, I don't know if he got braces, but he got a palate expander and I, nobody ever talked to me about orthodontia or anything like that. So I, I think that's most of what I have to say. Somebody just asked me to tell the baseball story again. So there you go. Um, there's another interesting psyop that happened in my childhood involving like a Pepsi bottle and maybe I'll tell that one again because 
yeah, just like psyops are performed on the world stage by governments and stuff, I think that this is part of the as above, so below thing too, that they, the lower levels try to like copy the higher levels and they see, oh yeah, psyops. And this comes in with the Mandela effect. I don't believe that the Mandela effect is supernatural. I think it's just, the Mandela effect is the news and the media plays psyops on people and try to make them think that they're crazy. They try to gaslight people. Like, I know for a fact Shazam was a genie movie with, uh, what's his face? <laughs> oh man. Anyways, who cares? Why do so many people have a scratch like scar on one of their eyebrows? Uh, and then I saw this in the bottom right corner. I have such a scar. I was like, oh, this is going to be gold. I knew before I clicked on this, this was going to be gold. Here we go. Let's get ready for the stories. Tell us about it. I have such a scar. I actually have one on each eyebrow. My brother also has one, but only one. I would imagine it's because for the eyebrow shave, <laughs> you're going to get two flavors of this, depending on what side of the coin you're on. If you're getting an eyebrow shave, maybe they have to do it in both eyebrows. However, if they're in doing an eyebrow implant, they only have to cut one side. I have one on each eyebrow. What do you know? My brother also has one, but only one. He does also have a scar right in the middle of his forehead, though. Huh. That could be normal. I don't know what that would be. And I have a split, and I have split my chin twice. I would assume it's just because we played outside. Or just played in general. I can't remember what all our scars are of, but... One of my eyebrow scars is from rollerblading. I had my blades on and my brother was on his bike. We decided to tie our mom's dressing gown rope around the seat of his bike and then around me. My brother obviously went riding like a lunatic around the streets, pulling me behind him. It was hilarious and really fun until I lost my balance, tripped, and bashed my head against a curb. Yeah, I don't believe the story at all. I think this is just a stupid story that they came up with. A lot of times, these people, they just come up with stupid stories. I guess now I'll talk about... I had a friend once who... He would bring it up out of nowhere. Like, I... This friend also went off to get more plastic surgery. Like, eyelid surgery later. Which I thought was weird. Because I thought he looked fine the way he was. But these baffos doing plastic surgery is just like a normal thing that they all go through. He would bring up... Like, oh, I got this chin scar from... It's like, dude, I never asked you. I didn't even notice, first of all. I didn't ask you about it. And he had some story about passing out in the bathroom. And that's why he has his chin scar. And yeah, again, I was like, I didn't ask. <laughs> why are you telling me this? Um, this, you know, I would need a diagram. How, if you're tying a gown? It seems like you'd be really close to the back of the to the bike. So I'm having a hard time imagining how, how you'd be hitting your chin on a curb. And that would be really bad. That sounds like it'd be like really bad. <laughs> Not just like leaves a little scar or the time we dared each other to ride our bike straight towards each other and not stop. What we didn't bank on was the fact we're both stubborn and daredevils. Oh yeah, this is a that happened story. <laughs> Neither of us stopped or swerved out of the way. We collided and I flew off my bike into the air and straight over the top of the crash and landed on the floor and passed out. More scars added to the list. This is just my assumption based on my own scars, my family scars, and my observations. Man, just a family full of scars. I would say that eyebrow scars are a thing from childhood, especially because so many people have them. Same as scars on the chin. Why specifically these two? I thought a classic scar is like across the face, like the cheek or something. Uh, maybe crossing the eye, you know? But eyebrow in particular, chin, I mean... I could see bonking your chin on stuff. Forehead, you'd think you bonk your head. Anyways, why so many? Why is it the famous people, the cool kids? The cool kids are going to have eyebrow scars. And, uh, yeah, I, I think I mostly said everything. Let me know if you've run into people that have chin scars and eyebrow scars and they have all these wild tales for how they happened. Maybe you feel like a psyop was performed on you at some point. Um, maybe I'll talk more about the Shazam thing, because that's, that's a Mandela effect I can, I really, I mean, I know it's true. I know Shazam really was a movie, and I, I know that it's just a gaslighting operation. They, I think that they just have some things planned in advance that they're gonna try to gaslight people with, and so they, they figure out the logistics of it somehow. That's the magic trick, and... 
things like, yeah, Mandela, I think that they just have planned in advance. Hey, we're going to kill him here, but we're going to, it'll be kind of quiet about it. And then we'll do it again later. So make people cra think they're crazy. Wait, didn't he already die? So that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. God bless everyone.